Welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. I'm back at Expo 2015 Milan inside the incredibly innovative uh, German pavilion, uh, Field of Dreams. I'm going to take you inside and show you some of the uh, amazing immersive and uh, interactive uh, features inside this pavilion. So let's uh, go inside and take a look. Okay, so I'm beginning the tour in Germany today here. Uh, in the middle of the um, expo space and I wanted to show you just how highly interactive and um, Innovative the pavilion is I don't think there's a single pavilion at Expo 2015 that does more than Germany uh, As you'll see they do just about everything from the technological to focusing on the natural and in particular I want to highlight in this feature how they've conceptualized this space through forms of storytelling and also uh, a unique guidebook that I'll show you and in terms of this guidebook, I have to say that it was one of the most unique uh, experiences of the, of the expo. And it sounds funny saying this, but there was so much information and context and uh, discussion of the aesthetic and design and interactive sensibilities within the pavilion in this guidebook that I found it to be one of the most memorable experiences of the entire expo. And so I'll be featuring some of these informational sheets here from this guidebook to help you uh, journey through the Germany pavilion. And then here we see a discussion of the concept behind the Pavilion of Germany, the field of ideas, talking about the creation of this landscape of, of ideas and solutions, so using landscape as a metaphor. Um, you'll also see in this next slide that they envision two routes in terms of walking through landscapes. Route one is called the walkable landscape, and this is the upper landscape we're gonna, we're gonna look at, uh, which is much more open, and the Route 2 is the interior one, and it takes you through the exhibition uh, pavilion space and gives you all the thematics uh, and the interactive technologies that you'll see throughout the video. And this particular slide from the guidebook talks about how they use principles of sustainability in terms of the pavilion construction, talking about the materials that were used as well as using natural ventilation to save energy. And then you could see on the right hand side here a discussion of these innovative solar trees that were part of this top pathway of the Germany Pavilion. And in terms of that top pathway, let's take a brief look here at Route 1. As you can see, a very dramatic, abstract, conceptual approach to landscape, um, walking up the wooden platform here, focus on sustainability, the recycling efforts that you see throughout. Um, the expo itself and now we can look at a little video as I'm walking around there were um, sensorial interactive components to the top part of the pavilion and you can see these innovative solar trees unfortunately I don't have any of the night shots of the pavilion as you can see a real uh, outstanding approach to design here at, at Route 1 and before I take you through Route 2 again I have to focus a little bit I know I seem obsessive about this, but this guidebook I thought was marvelous, and I'm so glad I happened to uh, find this. I can't recall, I think it was on my way into the expo space. And you know what I found to be remarkable about this, remarkable about this guidebook was that it gave the guest such a sense of the conceptual planning behind the pavilion here. And as you can see here, this looks very much like uh, the type of guidebook we might see in a theme park. And I mean this in a very positive sense because I think what they're doing here for the guest is orienting him or her in two senses. One is conceptually uh, explaining what the pavilion is about and two is spatially. As you can see in this example here, when you enter Route 2, you are presented with all these choices and opportunities to ref reflect on the pavilion and its various attractions. Another unique thing we find in this guidebook, as you see here, is the introduction to these various characters. Uh, and these are characters we actually meet uh, throughout the journey here at the Germany Pavilion. And we'll see in a second here, these are also related to these interesting and inter interactive and innovative uh, seed books, as they call them. And here actually is an image seeing the characters uh, in the space one of the first spaces that, that we uh, witness as a guest. What I like about this is that they're using storytelling. They're actually personalizing our experience in the pavilion by creating characters for us. And the characters represent 
a diverse range of occupations and lifestyles and ethnicities and cultural backgrounds. Okay, so now I'm waiting uh, outside the uh, Germany Pavilion, the Field of Ideas, and I was just given this, which um, I'm not sure what it's for, so it adds a bit of mystery to, to the um, guest's initial visit. And then the mystery begins to unfold. Again, you're presented with these seed books and you're instructed uh, that uh, you're instructed initially to pick up a book based on the language of choice, English, German, or Italian. And then throughout the um, initial guide here, you're given a sense of what the seed books are for, how they're used, and these are going to be a formative part of the guest's experience moving throughout the pavilion of Germany. Uh, and I have to say that there's a bit of an awe, uh, a, an ooh moment, where you are interacting with these books. You know, you start with the initial mystery of what are these seed books, and then you're given instructions about them, and that builds excitement because you want to go out and use them throughout the Route 2 pavilion space. Then the other thing that is going on here is they're using, as you can see here, the seed books as an opportunity then on these screens to introduce these various characters that I mentioned earlier. And the fact that they use characters and they create, um, I guess you could call them identity formations for us to interact with, I think is a very inno innovative way to think about theming and conceptually orienting the guest um, in the Germany Pavilion. Okay, and then here we're still getting to know the characters uh, the different figures for our experience in the pavilion and what's fun here there's a bit of humor where they're interacting with one another the one guy throws the apple and then another character catches it and so they're you know creating this this notion through the characters of interdependency which is I think a very popular theme we see throughout the expo and highlighted here in in Germany to some very interesting degrees and again I think I I mentioned this earlier but having these characters is such a smart way to orient the guest in the space it makes it much more personalized and seems less abstract and more connected to real people and real issues as opposed to just abstractions and concepts and things that don't have a direct bearing perhaps on the guest visiting the space. Okay and right now I wanted to play you uh, some of the live video that describes the seed book, how it's uh, used and I thought you would find this interesting since this was such a uh, important technological highlight of the Germany Pavilion. E vi dà accesso a tanti contenuti tematici dell'esposizione. With the seed board, you'll be able to interact with our multimedia installations along the way. Please watch the video to discover more. Per utilizzare la seed board, basta aprirla e tenerla dal bordo inferiore. Attenzione a non coprire nessun punto a marcature. Non appena muovete una seed board su una stazione, verrà riconosciuta subito. I contenuti appaiono nella vostra lingua. Per ogni stazione si possono usare fino a tre seed board contemporaneamente. È importante solo tre seed board. Ora tre seed board. Ciò che potete scoprire concretamente in ogni stazione tematica vi verrà mostrato sulla seed board. In alcune stazioni potrete attivare dei contenuti muovendo liberamente la vostra seed board su un oggetto. I punti marcati mostrano dove sono le informazioni più approfondite. Altre stazioni tematiche vi invitano a muovere la seed board verso l'alto e verso il basso. Potrete così scoprire livelli diversi. Nelle stazioni tematiche degli ambasciatori, avvicinando la seed board, potrete scegliere tra diversi capitoli. Avete così ottenuto le informazioni basilari sulla seed board. Buon divertimento alla scoperta del padiglione tedesco. Per ulteriori informazioni restiamo a vostra completa disposizione. Should you have any questions, feel free to ask. Enjoy your visit and fish. Okay, and now we'll begin the journey through Route 2, which is the interior route through the exposition space, and we'll get an opportunity here to take full advantage of these innovative seed books. Okay, and we're going to look here, uh, one of many times that I'll take you through some of the uh, 
Seedbook technology, the reason being I thought it was so uh, incredibly innovative and it was something that uh, was really a sign of the new or the future here at the Expo in Milan. Uh, the World Expo tradition, of course, is constantly focusing on this idea of new technologies and uh, new forms of innovation. And I thought that this was an example of a country using such a new form of technology in, in, a, in an innovative way and also a way that uh, supplemented the stories being told within the pavilion. And what's excellent here too is that the technology you can see with the docents helping people understand how to use the seed books, the technology is conducive to social interaction. People are asking questions, people are interacting with it. It's never boring, it's always exciting and it's something new because uh, you don't know exactly how to use it. It's not a tablet, it's not a smartphone, it's not a touchscreen computer. Um, it's uh, as close to, I would say, a haptic uh, form of technology that we can imagine here. Highly, highly innovative. And we'll leave the seed books just for a moment to come back to them later. Just give you a lay of the land here, a bit more of the design here along Route 2 inside of Germany. And the seed books were not the only interactive technology in the pavilion. I was quite surprised and pleased to see this, uh, an umbrella that the guest held up, which allowed for another projection to uh, take place. And again, I think what Germany is doing is personalizing technology, using it in innovative ways. And conceptually, by having it on the umbrella or in our hands with the seed book, we're asked to think about these issues in a much more intimate and personalized respect. And throughout so many of the spaces of the Germany Pavilion, opportunities for technological and immersive interaction abound. As you can see here, the guest is allowed to uh, use uh, motion-based uh, movements to basically interact with the screen and to call up information. So it reminds us maybe of the Wii or PlayStation Move, but taking it to another and more immersive uh, interactive level here in the Pavilion. And here we see yet uh, a further example of the interactivity. What I like about this example is they're combining the old and the new. They're using uh, these traditional food items in rather grand scale to create an opportunity for the guests to interact. As you can see here, you place the item, which is connected via this uh, information cord, and then you have to actually use your seed book as well. You could see the screen is asking for me to put my seed book down. And I struggle with this a little bit because I'm trying to use my cameras at the same time taking still images. But you could see here it's projecting the information um, about the tomato telling us how much or how many tomatoes are eaten every year uh, by Germans. I thought this was a very cool use of two forms of technology. And what's cool is they're using the seed books in tandem with other opportunities for immersion, interaction, and storytelling within the pavilion. And here I'm continuing the journey. As you can see, we have the uh, a very exciting approach to design. Back to using the uh, seed books. The seed books were a huge part of this experience and I thought it was one way to establish continuity and to also keep the guests focused. I hate to say on the task but in a sense it is a task because you are being instructed pedagogically about key issues. In this case we're learning about biodiversity. And so the seed book never got boring. It took a little bit of work to understand how to flip it left and right and to move it up and down but uh, it really did personalize the experience for the guests uh, within the space here at the pavilion. 
And you can see here we have uh, more interactive screens and uh, focusing here on um, food in the future and some of the issues that no doubt will come up in Germany and in other places. And what I really enjoyed about the technology was the fact that uh, it supplemented the experience in the space. It was never, I thought, used just for the sake of technology. So there was a, a storytelling component that was so strong uh, throughout Germany's pavilion and the technology at all times I felt was highly interactive and was also focused on complementing the story as opposed to being a story in and of itself. And you can also see some innovation here in terms of how they approached uh, this uh, uh, design of uh, looking at new food products. Okay, and we take the trip up the stairs here to enter what is uh, the last uh, section of, of Route 2. Okay, now as we near the end of uh, Germany's Pavilion, I'll uh, take you through and just show you some of the highlights here. You can see, um, again, a lot of innovation in terms of combining the technological with the natural, giving people information about diet, um, about um, different forms of horticulture. Really a lot to offer. Uh, as I said earlier, this pavilion, I think, has so much. Uh, if anything, the guests might feel overwhelmed by just the scale of what's presented. To see this in a careful sense, I think, would take one uh, at least two hours, if not more. Um, in my trip through the uh, pavilion space, even with taking video and still images and interacting, in particular with the seed books, I didn't find that I grasped as much of the pavilion as it could have. And I think that's one challenge with visiting the expo is trying to take in all the information. But certainly what Germany has done here is quite remarkable. Uh, it stands uh, on its own as one of the highlights uh, of my trip uh, throughout the, the World Expo 2015 in Milan. Hope you enjoyed this video feature today here at the Germany Pavilion at Expo 2015 Milan. Please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Girls Handbook.